And right here we're going to be looking at the consolidation for intercorporation investment in bonds. And we're going to be looking at bonds issued using the effective interest rate method here. So for our example here, Corporation S, the subsidiary, issues bonds on 11X1 to the outside party. And Corporation P, parent, buys back the bonds uh, from these outside parties on 1231X3, two, uh, three years later here. And the first thing we have to do is we have to set up a bond amortization schedule here for when Corporation S here uh, issued the bonds and then we also have to set one up here for Corporation P when uh, they bought back the bonds here. So first looking at Corporation S's uh, bond amortization schedule. So they issued them here at a discount and then they had uh, five years to maturity here and then you have to have a compute bond rate versus the effective rate and what we come up with here is a ca uh, schedule here for the payments and then the interest expense and then this amortization of the premium or discount and then the carrying value of the bond here and I've done that here for the uh, Corporation S, the subcorporation. Now let's move down to Corporation P, the parent corporation. And that's based on the repurchase here of the bonds. In this case, they repurchased them here and there's two years remaining on the bond and they paid in this case $103,500 for them. Uh, so they uh, bought them back here at a premium. So again, we have the amortization schedule here for the cash pay, the interest expense, the amortization here of the premium in this case, and then the carrying value. Value. So what we're going to be looking at here is the carrying value of the time of the repurchase by the bond by Corporation P, the parent, on 1231X3. And we're going to be looking at that carrying value here for the uh, bond here by Corporation S or the subcorporation here on their amortization schedule. And then we're going to be comparing it here to the uh, Corporation P. They repurchased here the bonds on 1231X3. We're going to compare that here to the uh, purchase price here of the bonds. Now this procedure here to eliminate these intercorporation bonds are, is not altered by the bond effective interest method for amortization. Only the dollar values are going to change and that's what we're going to be looking at here. So for our example here this consolidation we're going to eliminate the $103,500 the price paid here uh, by Corporation P against the book value at the repurchase date here of $98,000 $279 by Corporation S. And this is going to create a loss here on the retirement of $5,221. And that's just the difference between the uh, repurchase price here of $103,500 and then the book uh, carrying value uh, by subsidiary S on these bonds at the repurchase date. Okay, now we have to calculate the remaining loss here on this bond repurchase here. And I'm going to go through a schedule here, but I'll go through this schedule, go through the numbers, and then I'll relate it to the bond amortization schedules here for the parent and for the subsidiary. So first, looking at our schedule here, for the loss remaining at the year end, the investment in bonds on 1231X4 is $101,683, and we get that off the parent schedule, less the carrying value of the bonds, in this case it's $100,000, and then there's a discount here on the bonds at the uh, end of the fourth year of $943 and that comes off the subsidiary schedule so that the sum of those you get a net amount here of $99,057 here you net that against the investment in the bond and you come up with a net amount here of $2,626 so that's the loss remaining here uh, for the bonds at the year end now we have to look here for the loss for the amortization during the year so we have this the interest expense that we have eliminated here and that comes off the subsidiary schedule of $8,943 uh, less the interest revenue eliminated and there's an adjustment here because of the amortization and that was for $6,183 and that comes off the parents amortization schedule so the net amount here is for $2,760 so we total our uh, a loss here in investment in the bonds less the loss for the amortization during the year here and we get a total loss on one two of X4 here of $5,386. Now because it's uh, they it's split here between the subsidiary and the parent. The parent owns 90%, so the subsidiary gets 10%. Of this loss here, uh, the parent will get 90% of that for $4,847, and the subsidiary is going to get 10% for $539. So that would be how this loss here is divided up. Now, this loss here, that would be the difference between the price paid by the parent and the book value uh, for the subsidiary at the time of that um, 
when it was bought here by the parent. And that I'm showing here these amounts, but it, they're slightly different because it's not, I didn't perfectly amortize them. So, so for, I have a slight difference here. Okay, now to look at where we got our numbers here for when we were doing this schedule here for the remaining loss. First, looking at the subsidiary corporation amortization schedule here. Well, we got, would have got our interest expense here off the subsidiary's amortization schedule, and then we also got the uh, book value here at the repurchase date here. That came off the subsidiary's schedule here. And then also the discount on the bonds that was remaining here, that came off the uh, subsidiary's amortization amortization schedule. Now moving down here to the uh, parents amortization schedule. Now uh, we would have the corporation the price paid here. That is what we had here determined on our amortization schedule. And then also the interest revenue that they would be receiving here. Well it's shown as an interest expense here but that would be an interest revenue here to the parent. And that came off the parent's amortization schedule. And then we also have the investment here in the bonds at the uh, 12 uh, 31 x4 date here or the carrying value of the bonds here came, came off the amortization schedule here for the parent. Okay, now for our consolidation of Corp P, the parent, and Corp S, the subsidiary, for our eliminations and our adjustments that we have to make on this bond repurchase here. So we're going to be taking all these adjustments right off this schedule here that we made for the remaining loss on the bond repurchase. And we're going to take those adjustments right off this schedule here. So moving over to our consolidation worksheet. And again, this is for the year end 1231X4 here. So first we have this investment here in the bond uh, by the parent for the subsidiary. And that we would credit here for $101,683. That was the investment that we had and the bond at that date. And then we'd also eliminate here the bond payable here for the subsidiary. We credit or debit that for a hundred thousand dollars and then we also have this discount here on the bond uh, payable here we would credit that here for nine hundred and forty three dollars and then we also have this interest expense and interest income that we have to eliminate here so uh, first we debit the interest income here for sixty one hundred and eighty three dollars and then we credit our interest expense here for eighty nine hundred and forty three dollars so that leaves one thing here left so let's go back to our uh, uh, schedule here for the remaining loss. And that was this loss, this total loss here that we calculated for both the bond and the uh, uh, for the amortization for the year here, $5,386. And if you note, we was, uh, we divided that up here. The parent corporation would get 90% since they had a 90% owner, or they'd get $4,847. And then the sub corporation would get a 10% or $539 are their portion of the loss. So the total loss here would be $5,386 that we have to account for. So let's go back to our consolidation worksheet. This is a key point here. Now uh, the parents portion, the $4,847, that would be debited to their retained earnings as of 11X4. That's the parent corporation's retained earnings. And then the subsidiaries portion of the loss here, that that would also be debited, but that would be to their retained earnings on 11X4 here of the subsidiary corporation. So that would account for our total loss here that we had to eliminate here on this bond um, repurchase. All right, in summary, when making our consolidations here for intercorporation investment in in bonds using the effective interest rate method. We have to set up a bond amortization schedule here for the subsidiary corporation when they issued the bond and we also have to uh, set up a bond amortization schedule here for the parent corporation when they repurchase the bond. And what we look for on these amortization schedules for our adjustments and our eliminations are dollar value changes here between our uh, two amortization schedules here.